Uh, people have, have gutted the abandoned or the shut down office building and are building a modern hotel inside it. It's supposed to open up in the first quarter of this coming year. That late 19, 2019 has slipped. Otherwise, we'd be staying there on our way home. There's this hotel is right, a small uh, Jim Butler Inn is right next to the Mizpah. The You saw the Best Western on the map. That's the last of the downtown hotels. And there you can see, or you can see the other two That's hotels. right. You can see the Mizpah Belvada in the distance. Uh, down at the south end of town, approximately one mile away, uh, and there are sidewalks all the way down there if you're not having a problem with walking a mile. There is the Tonopah Station Hotel. We've stayed there some, several times. Very nice. It also has the world-famous Clown Motel. Why is it called Clown Motel? Because <laughs> it is entirely decorated in, 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 in the, in, with clowns. You get unlimited clowns in the office and in your room. Clown oh, curtains? Clown oh, curtains, clown sheets, sheets, clown everything. Every room is set different. Uh, I, I've actually not been in any of the rooms myself, but search for Clown Motel. Google that and you'll see it. It, by the way, has just been recently. We were last time we came through there, they were in the process of doing a hotel refresh. They'd hold out all the mattresses and taking it all out and put in new, new, new sheets, new bedding, new, new paint, all that stuff. That sounds fun. Yeah. <coughs> Oh. And that's going to be probably the least expensive of the of the hotels we have. That's probably start at fifty nine dollars. We don't. Uh, that's the expectation. I'm not certain of it. All the numbers I quote are not counting tax. Oh yes, I meant I meant to mention yes. It is also very conveniently located to the old Tonopah Cemetery. <laughs> and and we do anticipate having uh, some paranormal programming because the Mespa Hotel is reportedly one of the most haunted hotels <coughs> in the country. Uh, and uh, we're going to have some stuff on that. They've told us if you're going to go explore the cemetery to check in with the Clown Motel first because you have to use their parking lot to get into the cemetery. There's some other hotels in town. Uh, these two I showed here, mm, well, there are rooms in them, but if you really want to go cheap, contact them, but we're probably not going to list these two. But they're there. There's also a Quality Inn down at the north end of town. Oh, and, we, and I, as I said, free parking. No height restrictions. No parking garages. Free, free, free. Okay. There's a dozen restaurants in town ranging from fast food up to the medium fine dining that we've shown you in the main Beans hotel. And Beans and Brews, yeah, that's, that used to be a McDonald's, but now is a basically a combination coffee shop, convenience store, and gas station. Now, they make good sandwiches. They do make very good sandwiches, yes. Pizza place around the corner. There is there, th this line here, uh, the whole length of the town, about two and a half miles long, shows the dozen restaurants in town, including, and you may have seen someone wearing the shirt last night, of the Tonopah Brewing Company. There is a brew pub in town, and they are between the convention center and the uh, Best Western Hotel. Uh, I don't know beer. I'm told it's pretty good and that they have a good barbecue. We are about, and I notice this is pretty much the whole length of the town, um, and we're right in the middle of it, so it's halfway between. I'm going to go quickly through these things. You've got the, the Tonopah Brewing Company, the Tonopah Liquor Company, uh, the Mizpah Hotel's Bar, which is not smoking, by the way, because the hotel itself is 100% non smoking. Yeah, it's, yeah. Only the, it's only the casino across the parking lot, and the parking lot is a little narrow parking lot, is, is smoking over there. There are two RV, well, there's two RV parks in town, including one at the Tonopah Station. We had somebody who bought a membership at the Lost Town asking about. There's a coin laundry at the Tonopah Station Hotel. Oh, there, yeah. We are part of the electric highway, so there are cars charging stations at both ends of town. There's the Tesla stations that are downtown. Um, there's this wonderful bookstore right next door. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, it is one of the, an old-fashioned bookstore with a lot of narrow shelves and, and, and you could get lost in there, and I have bought a bunch of books from them. Right behind our hotel is things to come and do, the Tonopah Mining Park. This is, Tonopah was the last of the big silver strikes. Um, the, mines are, the mines are played out in this area, but it is a, the mining park is there. We've spent much of the day there ourselves. Um, I recommend spending time, getting time. Those people with mobility problems, they also have, uh, they have ATV tours where they'll come and get you from your hotel, take you up to the park, drive you around the park. But from the back parking lot of the Mizpah. Yeah, that shot right there standing in the park. That's where they kick you up, so you have to get to the bottom of the hill first. <clears throat> so it is a climb. Uh, that's a, pictures of mining park in here. That's ATV tours. The Central Nevada Museum covers the history of the area. It used to be a big railroad town. Alas, the railroad doesn't run there anymore. 
I'd love to have that. And it has the only municipal stargazing park that I've ever heard of. With concrete pads, there are concrete hard points for putting up your telescope. Some of the darkest skies in the country are located. In and the there's a sign there in more than one place giving you the exact coordinates for your tractors. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Um, we also have our own conveniently located mad science's death ray. <laughs> well, it's what it looks like, at least. 3,000 degrees. Uh, yes, there is a solar thermal power plant located here. What you see is hundreds of ante uh, antennas. Mirrors focusing the light of the sun on a central tower. That tower, when the things are defocused, is black. Science shine the light on that and melt salt. Molten salt is then pumped down generates power by boiling water, pump right back up and keep it on, and therefore we have a solar power plant that works all night long and even when the, and when the clouds come out. Okay. Uh, therefore we are a solar powered convention. And there's a bunch of other stuff that we think you can do because this leads to why it's, the, 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 I've told you all the good things, there's one big challenge. There's the only way to get there basically is to drive. Private car. Private car is the only way. There is no bus service oh, in your wrong. train. You can ride a horse. The municipal stables has good rates. Oh, that's true. That's right. Five dollars a day to stable your horse at the municipal stable. And I'm not kidding. Okay. Oh, you have spider on horse. That's right. Denver has the four mile station. How many stations are there between Denver and Tonopah to change horses? That's a good question because the actual Pony Express route runs further north. A lot further north, close to where we live in Fernley. I don't have an answer. You've asked me what I don't know. <laughs> okay. You stumped him on that, yes. Okay. Um, if you're flying there, the likely things to do are to fly to Las Vegas or Reno and rent a car. If you're driving, there's several different routes. And we, if you're driving on your own from anywhere in this area, anywhere in this area, LA, California, California, whatever, um, there are lots of different ways to get there. Um, they will give you idea the, for the way you're coming from will decide what sort of extra tours to go and look at because there is a lot of them. Um, there's a lot of interesting things. We're we have a travel coordinator, Sandra Childress, who after the next WesterCon is going to start encouraging people to contact her to find out what the what your prospects are for coordinating your travel with other people, combining your trips, and conceivably, and we're not going to promise this because it's challenging. Conceivably, if there's enough interest to look into chartering a bus, say from Las Vegas, I can see possibilities, people flying in and then the bus picks them up. It's hard to hurt cats that way. Even hurting four people into a car may be challenging, but we <coughs> think it's a really neat event to go to. And I, key thing here, it's gonna be small. It's gonna be inexpensive. It's just gonna be hard to get there. That's a, that is a real challenge. But I want to, before we finish, I want Lisa, because she's doing the hospitality functions, I want her to talk about her vision on this. Well, as I said, anyone who ever listens, I love hospitality. It's where I've met more friends or new friends I've ever met. So when I saw the beautiful fan village they had in London, some didn't like it. I adored it because I could always find somebody to talk to. When I bumbled, bumbled into the Tonopah facility, I said this was perfect for hospitality. So if I have enough deputies, I can't do it now. I once upon a time could. We want to have the hospitality open 24 hours a day. Now that's killer. But we already have people who want to do late night film programs. We may have late night film programs. We may have late night, late night, late night programs. Um, but since we have the facility, I want to make the best use of it. So that's all I can say is that it's going to be a little more than uh, chips and drink. But I'm, I'm planning for something a lot more than that. I forgot something in programming. Because Whoa. we have the projection and the internet oh, yes. stuff, we are anticipating, you know how you have the streaming programming here, and we. Our, our plan is to have one of those function rooms set up as a streaming program so the non-attending members can attend, and so we can have program participants attending. And one of the members of our board of directors, because we are under the corporation that brought you the last three San Jose or San Bay Area World Cons and several Western Cons, SFSFC, one of our directors lives in England, and Cheryl Morgan is anticipating trying to get people from uh, Western Europe 
to participate in programming. Of course, that means that gives you a reason to come to your morning programs. And I would sort of need to have some program participants from Western Europe. It is, after all, Western time. <laughs> And we should be, and one of the things Lisa and I are going to be doing on our way back is to go ahead and do a little We have an appointment for a week from today with the Tumpak Convention Center to do a little bit of testing of their facilities. We can't guarantee these things are going to happen, but the technicalities are there. This convention center really wants us, Tonopah wants us there. Uh, as a percentage of the town's population, should we hit our projected goals, we are a bigger thing than Comic Con is to San Diego. <laughs> As I said at the last WesterCon, and I'm now believing this more and more myself, I am looking forward to bringing science fiction, fandom, and conventioneering to a small rural town who never has any, any access to this at all. And so I hope anybody who thinks about it will also go back to your people and say, Hey, you know, maybe my town is only 50,000 or 100,000, it's not a million. Let's try to have a convention. You know, but lots of places will fit. You just have to get a really interesting shoehorn. <laughs> we were doing an interview with, while we were bidding, an interview with Ray Graham, who was the, I believe, the, the like the front desk manager of the Mispa Hotel, along with her wife, Kayla, and I don't think, I don't remember her last name, I'm sorry. And they were saying they and their two children were really think, looking forward to this being a really great thing. This is exciting to them. So they, they were cool with that. Okay, we've gone on way longer than we meant to, so we can go. So we, but we still have some time. We have half an hour still. We have about 20 minutes actually, because there's nothing after us. So about 20 so minutes. So ask Sally some good questions. Yeah, yeah probably not thought. Ask us both questions. Ask us both questions. Who has questions? Oh my God, you don't tell me. Well, if you don't have any questions, we can I can keep talking. Honestly, we're we're real enthusiastic it's about that. It's not a question. Linda. Is anybody bidding for 2022? Not to our knowledge. Not yet. Not to our knowledge, and let's go through technically here. Um, the, the the first deadline for filing is the end of this month. Uh, at the moment, let me see. You're the administering site, yes. so nobody. Let's see. Any but any place in Western North America or Hawaii, and forget. Don't bring up Australia, please. Okay. Uh, the uh, Western North America and Hawaii is eligible to bid. For the moment, only the southern two thirds of that area is eligible. That doesn't mean because the northern tier of era, including Canada, is not eligible yet. If nobody files by the end of this year, then the any place in Western North America is eligible, and anybody who files by April fifteenth is uh, going to be on the ballot for the election, uh, just like you know uh, Tonopah and Phoenix were on the ballot last year. Um, should Nobody file at all, then the business meeting gets to decide. And guess who's chair of the business meeting? Please <laughs> file. Somebody go out there and convince somebody to file, please. I really, I really hope somebody files, and we get some people interested in those in Western. Next question. Is the best Western the only hotel there that includes breakfast? Uh, of the downtown hotel, oh, I, I think the Jim Butler might have like. Uh, some coffee and, donuts. coffee and donuts type. The uh, Comfort Inn also. The Comfort Inn. They're not on the map there because it's about it's off the it's one of those at the ends of town. The newly opened Comfort Inn, which is a very nice hotel, we went and had a look at it. Uh, it has a uh, I looked to me like a Holiday Inn style, Express style cook breakfast similar to that of the Best Western. Okay, thank you. Okay. Oh, and those two hotels I just mentioned, the Quality Inn and the Best Western, those are the chains. No, there are no Hiltons or Marriotts or Holiday Inns or any of those. This is a small Nevada town we're talking about here. Anybody else? Wow, that was my question. Okay, well, membership. At, let's talk. Let's talk sales then. Okay, I, I met our prices and so on. Memberships in our convention are currently forty dollars. She's first. Okay, I was going to go backwards. No, okay. Okay. Goes, not like forty dollars <laughs> because it, we're because it's longer to us and you. Our lowest rates are 130. Our lowest rates are 134, and they go. No, no, no. That's the hotels. Oh, uh, the hotels. Your membership rates. Membership rates. Ooh. Okay, there's 65 right now, and they go up to 70 at the end of the year, I believe. Just a minute. You have it there. I have it. I think that was right. <laughs> Mm 
No, it's not this one. Okay. It's, it's on the website. It's super busy next year. It's a, yeah. And, um, and then it'll be 75 at the door. And our $40 rate is going to be good at least until February, it, um, mainly because we've been a little late in getting out our progress report to tell people about our, ourselves. Uh, if you voted, and there's about 60 people who voted who haven't converted yet, uh, it's, ten, it's an extra $10 off of, well, it's only $10 for 50 plus, you already paid 20 toward it. I don't know about you, are you going to do office hours at your, at, during fan table time on, on Sunday? Me? You. Me. Uh, yeah, I could, but we have a drawback that our system requires you to go in yourself and set up your own accounts and pay them off the line. Okay. Although I do have flyers here with all the links on the bottom to do it. We're going to be for what for Tonopah, We're going to host a t We're going to be sitting at a table space available on Sunday, and we'll sell you a membership there. We do take credit cards through. That's Stripe, I think, the thing where you have the clear view. Square? Square. square. Yeah, Square. Yeah, square. square. I get them all confused. Yeah, Square. Um, Lucy, what do they call it Stripe? Uh, we also will okay. take cash and checks. Cash, checks, uh, yeah, it's all this money order. No firstborn yeah. children. No. Pizza? <laughs> but we would, like, we would like your blood in the form of volunteers. Uh, honestly, it should. the more people who volunteer, the, the easier this should be to do. And this is, you know, a small, our environment is smaller, and we're going to, and, it, and we'll probably have a higher proportion of volunteers. We're putting on, we're putting on a convention for each other. A fan-centric convention. Now, I want to jump in. Anybody who says this, I'm, I'm a vicious one. We are not a simple relaxicon. My model is London. We're just smaller. Much smaller, but but that's my model. As crazy as that sounds, that's my model. And due to some changes in our layout, we increased the number of function rooms, and I am very excited about that. So there's some, one more track okay. now. So we're going to have some interesting enhanced stuff and some stuff we won't have. We'll have a small dealer's room with ten, but we don't expect to have an art show because there's just basically no place to put it. Linda. Who's doing programming? That's a good question. I would love to have a head of programming. I've been looking for somebody to run programming. Um, you're not volunteering because you're running registration. I would love to have somebody interested in running a relatively small program with a, maybe four <laughs> tracks of programming tops. It's small by modern standards. We know that. Um, so same size as this convention. Yeah, it's some. It's similar to. You know, you might call it a triple-sized SmothCon in that respect as far as the scope yeah. of programming goes. Though we do have, we hope to have a bit more science in the same way that you do. Not like you do. Oh, boy. But yeah, we, we hope to have laid it on. Yeah, well, we've laid it on like a, but, but we do have the fact that we have a number of people who want to come to do the astronomy because we have a place you can actually go do it. With, in, in thing. And so we're very excited about that one aspect. Is there a local astronomer who can... Well, there's a number of people who, who, who have scar, stargazing walks star and up star walks and things, and they come and go depending upon how many people are active at it at the time. We don't know yet until we get closer and yeah. give you more detail. The, the MISPA has been trying to take over the uh, because the person who was doing the star walks stopped doing them. And so the MISPA has been trying to get them started again, and there were some flyers up for it last time we were there. So we can't really tell you what it's going to be like two years from now, but there is considerable interest in it because the, the night skies there are just brilliant. Well, if you can get Mike Wiesner, he's got he's got telescopes, and he's a, a, an amateur astronomer. Okay, remind but me he's of from that. A, he's from uh, Arizona. So. Yeah, so remind me of that, ladies, since you're on the committee. Remind me to follow this up, and we'll okay. try and find it. If you know somebody who might be interested in taking on the challenge of such programming, please please contact me. Uh, it should be chair at westercon 74org or anything at westercon 74 that is, doesn't have a specific assignee goes to me for my sins. Maybe you've been so bad. So if we type in autographs at westercon 74 At the moment, it'll go to me, yes, until I find somebody to write. Right, so yeah. Or officially, any job that isn't assigned is done by the chair. That's exactly right. And the chair, me, or the bear. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I mean, I ran autographs of Hawaii. Okay. Which was Larry sitting over in the bar. That's right. Well, yes, the bear will have an address. Don't send to it because Kuma, because because Kevin will have to answer for him because he can't reach the keyboard. That's right. <laughs> we, you know, so. That's, He's our official. Yeah. 
I mean, we think we're going to have a lot of fun. It shouldn't be. It, it, other than the, and, and even the drive. Remember, remember, take the ex, for, for extra fun, take Nevada State Route 375 if you're coming from the south, the extraterrestrial highway. Which you can, and then you can schedule your trip to stop for lunch at Rochelle, Nevada, and have lunch at the Little Ailey Inn. Oh, great oh, business and gravy. Do they now? Excellent. We're, I've not been over it. We're planning to go back home by way of that route, weather permitting. We so. drove through there yeah. for um, Spokane. Oh, okay. I'm looking forward to it that My, my trip yeah, Spent the night in Alamo. Yeah. So, you see. Business and gravy were excellent. Okay. You know, top four of my life. Great, thank you for telling me that. Um, now, now I know what to be looking out for when we start when we get to when we get there on uh, next week. Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, but this is a two week road trip for us, folks. We we left our home. Then. Okay, anybody else? I think we're done. Thank you all. And looking yeah. forward to seeing everybody in Seattle. Yes. Well, SeaTac, but it's close yeah. enough. We'll see you up there, yeah. and we hope we'll see you in Tonopah in a couple of years. We hope to see you there. A little bit more, we'll see come to you there. Yeah. You know, depending on the weather, I'll either drive through the Mojave Desert or, or drive around. Okay. Thank yeah. You. And we all look forward to seeing you in Seattle, too. And I guess I will be there on Sunday. I didn't know about it until Kevin told me. Then tomorrow? Well, he said something about where we're going. Tomorrow, tomorrow there's, there's, a scheduled, there's a scheduled time for, for, for fan tables. There for fan open tables. Seating type which fan I tables. didn't know anything about until Kevin said so. Aww. So I imagine I will be there. Uh, I have my membership. So. You're already, I know, you've got the membership. You do, you do, you do. We still need You do. <laughs> Who do? Who do? You do. So there's a number of people in here that already have their memberships. But talk to other people here. But the few of you who don't, okay. come talk to us on Sunday. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell passengers by. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And uh, this is a lot less a lot less relaxed and it's unstructured than the big fans inquisition, so I'm sort of glad they gave us a separate yes. space over here yes. because I don't think I could possibly have told you all I wanted to tell in three minutes. Thank you very much. That's <laughs> why I was wondering how much time you have.